Soviet troops in Afghanistan are reported to be spreading out across the country and engaging the Muslim rebels. The reports from Western diplomats suggest the Soviet formations are moving in considerable strength. 10,000 men backed by heavy armor and aircraft are said to be engaging the rebels. Eyewitnesses said they counted between three and 400 tanks as well as columns of artillery and troops. Although most of the troops seem to be stationed at key areas around Kabul to establish a defensive perimeter in case of counter-attacks from Afghan troops, there was just a faint sign of Christmas cheer among the soldiers at the airport. Recent events in Afghanistan have made us all aware of the ever-increasing possibility of a limited war in Europe. The Soviets believe they have the ability to take a chunk out of Western Germany. Perhaps for them, it is only a question of opportunity. Facing one British Corps in BAOR is three shock army. On its northern flank is two guards army, and on its southern flank is eight tank army. Three shock army sits astride the Hanover Autobahn. Although predominantly a tank heavy army, its leading formations are motor rifle regiments. The motor rifle regiment is split into three main elements, combat support, service support, and the fighting units. Service support includes transport, medical, and maintenance companies, the supply platoon, and the regimental band, totaling 160 men and 73 B vehicles. Combat support includes the signals, recce, and engineer companies, the chemical defense platoon, and the regimental artillery. The recce company is 50 strong and mounted in 11 BRDM APCs. The engineer company is equipped with four TMMs, which can each bridge a 40 meter gap. Also, it has two MTU-20s capable of bridging a 20 meter gap. The regimental artillery consists of three batteries. The anti-tank guided weapons battery comprises nine BRDM SAGA vehicles, each with six missiles loaded and eight ready for reload. This is the same basic vehicle as the Recce BRDM, but the turret has been replaced by the SAGA launch mechanism. In any role, the vehicle is amphibious using its hydrojets. It has an anti-armor capability to 3,000 meters. Other versions can carry SWATA missiles. The 122mm battery is equipped with six 122mm self-propelled guns called the M1974. The gun fires HE, heat, smoke, and alum to a range of 15,300 meters. Its rate of fire is seven to eight rounds per minute. The anti-aircraft battery is in the process of being re-equipped with eight ZSU 23-4s. This four-barrel radar-controlled anti-aircraft gun has a range of 2,500 meters and a cyclic rate of fire of 4,000 rounds per minute. In battle, they'll be separated up to 200 meters and they can be used in the ground roll attack. Now we look at the third and most important element of the motor rifle regiment, the fighting units. These are made up of three motor rifle battalions of either track BMP or wheeled BTR-60 PB. One tank battalion of T-64. It's important at this point to understand the role of the T-72. The T-72 is the cheaper version of the T-64, which was first seen in 1976. Three shock army and its flanking formations are all equipped with T-64 in both motor rifle and tank regiments. Let's have a look at the motor rifle regiment vehicles in more detail. The T-64 shown here is the main battle tank. 
There are 41 of these in the tank battalion, and each motor rifle battalion gets a tank company of 13 T-64s. This gives each motor rifle company a troop of four tanks. There is a crew of three men, and it's a light, little lighter than Chieftain, weighing only 40 tons. It's a low silhouette vehicle, the deck being about chest height. The main armament is a 125mm smoothbore gun, and it fires APDS out to 2,000 meters. It can also fire heat and hash to about 1,500 meters. It's capable of a top speed of 65 kilometers per hour. It has two distinct advantages over previous Soviet tanks in that it's fitted with a laser rangefinder and has an automatic load. It's not an amphibious vehicle, but can snorkel to a depth of five meters. Here's the BTR-60 PB. This is a big, heavy APC and weighs 10 tons. It has a good cross-country performance despite its bulk. It has a crew of two and carries nine passengers. Its armament is a 14.5 heavy machine gun and a 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine gun. It was designed as an amphibian and it has a remarkable speed of 10 kilometers per hour in water. It has two big disadvantages, however. The passengers can only dismount through the roof, and its great size makes it an easy target. Notice how the squad, on dismounting, moves to the front of the vehicle and advances firing in a straight line. This is normal dismounted Soviet tactics. The squad is followed closely by the APC, which can give a heavy weight of overhead fire support. This is the BMP. It's the newest Soviet APC. Its armor comprises a 73mm smoothbore gun that has 40 rounds mixed HE and HESH. Maximum range of 1,300 meters, but effectiveness falls off sharply at 800 meters. A coaxial 7.62 gun and a SAGAR anti-tank guided missile. The vehicle carries four SAGAR missiles. The maximum range is 3,000 meters but it has a dead space of 0 to 500 meters because it takes the gunner four to five seconds to bring the missile under control. However, the 73 millimeter gun compensates for this deficiency. Because the SAGA gunner must track the missile to the target, smoke will defeat the weapon. On the other hand, the gunner is protected. The BMP has only light armor and a 762 millimeter high velocity round hitting its side at 90 degrees will penetrate it. The 73 millimeter gun is not stabilized and the SAGA must be tracked so that the vehicle has to be stationary when firing both these weapons. The BMP has no night sight for either weapon. It's especially vulnerable from behind because its rear doors are in fact flexible fuel tanks. The troops inside have the added discomfort of sitting on top of the ammunition storage space. Its strengths are its firepower, mobility, and its low silhouette. Now we'll come on to tactics. The formation of the motor rifle advance begins with recce patrols. Some 10 kilometers behind the recce patrols will be found the leading battalion group, on either side of which is the march security detachment. 20 kilometers behind this group will come the main body of the motor rifle regiment, and behind them, the rear guard. The lead battalion group advances with a motor rifle platoon as its recce patrol. This is followed some five kilometers behind by the point, which is a motor rifle platoon and a tank. The next comes the vanguard, comprising a motor rifle company, less one platoon, a tank platoon, less one tank, and the anti-tank platoon. Behind this 
will be the main body with all the combat service support and artillery weapons. Behind them will be the rear guard. The vanguard company will have the first contact. They will apply the standard Soviet drill and deploy into platoon columns behind a tank. The company will then adopt standard battle formation and attack. Note the company commander is in the rear center. The company will attack from as much as one kilometer away. Little use is made of cover or fire and maneuver, and infantry will not dismount until made to do so by the strength of the defense or the nature of the terrain. This will cause the tanks and the advance to slow down. In both types of assault, mounted or dismounted, the final 250 meters will be made with all weapons firing. The company frontage will be anything from 250 to 500 meters, depending on the terrain and the enemy's strength. If the vanguard attack fails, they will remain in position to cover the leading battalion attack, which would normally develop within about one hour. If this fails, the regimental attack will differ in that it will be on a wider front. There will be a reserve echelon and it will be supported by air and ground recce to locate targets such as headquarters and gunner batteries. Elaborate deception plans will be employed. It will be preceded by a formal artillery barrage lasting up to 40 minutes. The basic drill of deploying from the line of march into battle formations will be unlikely to change. We ourselves must be able to withstand the enemy's devastating artillery barrage. This can only be done by proper overhead protection in our defensive positions. The Soviet tactic of a fast, massed armored thrust on a comparatively small front enables us to use our anti-tank weapons to devastating effect. It will not be so much a question of great accuracy as one of weight of firepower. If we can make the enemy infantry dismount, this will slow the advance, giving our machine guns and anti-tank weapons the best opportunity to halt the attack. Once dismounted, the infantry also has no means of communicating, and this makes his command and control almost impossible. Remember, the company commander is the only person with two radio nets in his vehicle. If all the OC's vehicles were killed, all vehicles would have to go onto the same battalion net. Remember also, the company commander is the one vehicle with two antennas. Here, we're watching a UK battle group making the best use of its artillery and anti-tank fire. The infantry has been made to dismount and is coming under heavy small arms fire. Three FBF fire over. Go on, do do, we'll go. Up. Fire machine battery. Oh, two, this is two, two, fire mission battery over. Push up. FPF fire. FPF fire over. Push up. Shot out. In conclusion, an intelligent assessment of the Soviet Army's weaknesses and a ruthless exploitation of them can more than compensate for NATO's comparative strength deficiencies.